Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, Miss. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine. That's good. So we are in the session number two in this second week. So we are going to start with another topic. Um, we were uh, learning about some techniques that we can use or strategies that we can use for this uh, listening for a specific information in which we were talking about something that we need to do to um, develop or to improve our listening uh, skill. And in some cases, we were talking about that we need to do some um, or to follow some steps in which we can find some information when we are having a conversation. So now we are going to talk about another uh, drama topic. In this case, we are going to talk about so to neither either. So we are going to see what are these um, what are these words and how can we use them in English language or in the process that we are following right now. So we are going to learn about so, to, neither, and either, and what are the difference between those words and how can we use them in a conversation. So we have the first thing and we are going to talk about so do I and neither do I. So in that, in that case, we are going to see in which uh, situation we use, so do I, and in which situations we use, uh, neither do I. So uh, in that case, we are going to use them for different situations. So in this case, it says that I use, so do I, to say that a positive sentence is also true for me. So in that case, we are going to say that we are using it, so do I, in a positive connotation sentence. And I use neither do I to say that a negative sentence is also true for me. In this case, we are uh, talking about a negative connotation in some sentences. So in this case, we have two expressions that we are going to learn today. And in this case, we have four. But at the beginning, we are going to see two of them. And we have so do I and neither do I. And it's saying that we are going to use so do I for a positive sentence or that a positive situation is true for me. And we are using and neither do I to say that a negative sentence is also true for me. So in that case, we are saying that the negative connotation of the sentence. In some cases, it's not like we are going to have the structure for a positive or a negative uh, sentence, like don't, can't, and all of that. In that case, is the connotation, the way in which we are speaking in that moment. So we have some examples. And we have the example number one. Let me put this like this one. Here it says, Jan. It's like a mini conversation. 
And it says, I hate mushrooms. I hate mushrooms. In that case, that is a negative uh, sentence. We are not using the auxiliaries in those cases, but we know that we are talking about something negative because we are using the word hate. And that is a negative word or a negative connotation in that word. So in that case, it's a negative one. But remember something. If the sentence is positive, in that case, um, we are going to use so do I. Because in that case, it's something that I don't do. ¿Cómo lo, lo, lo especificamos mejor? Esa oración es una oración negativa porque lleva I hate mushrooms. Odio los eh, hongos, ¿verdad? Nosotros vemos que es una, una oración que lleva una connotación negativa, pero para nosotros, si sí, en el caso de que nosotros odiemos los hongos, va a ser una respuesta positiva porque yo también comparto esa idea. En el caso de que yo no comparta esa idea, ahí sí, va a ser una respuesta negativa, porque no estoy compartiendo lo mismo con la persona que está hablando. En este caso, vamos a hacerlo de una manera positiva, o sea, la respuesta es positiva. So, in that case, we are going to say, so do I. And we have here, and it says, I also hate mushrooms. So that's why I'm saying that in that case, we are going to use the positive connotation sentence. So if I, um, if I do something like the other person, like the person that is talking, I'm going to say, so do I, because I am sharing the same, um, the same thing with that person, but if I am not doing that thing and I am not like feeling that I can share that thought with that person, I'm going to use the negative connotation. We have another example here and it says, let me see. We have another mini conversation and it says, Lucy, I don't live in London. In this case, I'm using negative auxiliary. I don't live in London. And we have the answer. Neither do I. Neither do I. And we have like this explanation and it says, I also don't live in London. For example, maybe Lucy and I both live in Paris. I mean, in London. So it says that this is often used to or as a reply to someone else in a conversation. But both sentences can also be said by the same person and even join together. So in that case, we are using so do I or neither do I when we are having a conversation with another person. But we can also use those expressions by ourselves. That is not like a specific rule in which we can say that um, this phrase is only used in conversation. We can also add these uh, sentences to our uh, speech in some cases.
So we have uh, some examples of this part in which we're saying that we can use that exp expressions by ourselves. And we have me, that is the person that is talking. And I said, Elizabeth loves sausage, so do I. Elizabeth ama el café. Yo también, podemos decir que lo podemos asociar de esa manera. Yo también. O yo igual. So in that case, we are using the positive sound attention. And we have, again, me that is talking. Hurry doesn't play the piano. And neither do I. Harry no toca el piano y yo tampoco. We can say that in Spanish or something like that. So in that case, I am using the structure of the sentences when I am expressing something because in that case, I am talking about two different persons and I am explaining that I do or I don't do something. So in that case, we can use it. So remember, we have just a little information about this topic, but we are going to explain a little more. Estamos hablando en este caso de eh, dos expresiones. Son las dos primeras expresiones que nosotros tenemos en eh, el documento. So, we have so do I and we have neither, neither do I. So, we are going to clarify the information because it's very so, we have, so do I, and in that case, we are going to use it for a positive sentence, in which the sentence uh, is true for me. Decimos que tenemos el so do I cuando la, la oración es verdadera para nosotros. Si yo también comparto este pensamiento, si yo también comparto esta actividad, Yo voy a utilizar so do I. Pero si yo no comparto esa acción, yo no comparto esa situación, yo no comparto esa idea, yo voy a utilizar neither do I en oraciones negativas. Más que todo cuando llevamos auxiliares o palabras que nos denoten a nosotros que la oración es negativa. No simplemente la connotación, sino que también los auxiliares. So in that case, we have that information that is very clear. And we were saying that uh, in some cases, or it's more common to use these expressions when we are talking with someone and we are giving answers. But also we can use these expressions uh, when we are talking um, or even when we are using uh, or having a conversation with another person and we can use the, um, the expression in the same sentence that we are using to talk about with other people. So, we are going to have a lot of examples in which we are using uh, this expression, and then we are going to have another list of um, a sentence or words that we are going to use. So, it says, um, I use do because the first sentence in the present simple tense, uh, the verb after, so, or neither change depending on the tense of the verb. And we are going to see some of this. So in that case, we have do, and we have a, to change that a structure depending on the tense that we are using when we are talking. So now we are going to see some examples with present simple with a uh, present simple with be, present continuous, past simple, past simple with be, present perfect, and future simple and model verb. So we are going to uh, have some examples depending on the um, tense.
So we are going to insert a table in this case. We have a, okay. So we have here, second symbol. And we are using it, do or that. And we have here, Lucy likes coffee, so do I. And then we have Lucy doesn't like coffee. Neither do I. In that case, we are using present simple and we are using the uh, subject that is the uh, pronoun I. So in that case, we are using you. Now we have the second one, and it's present simple with D. And we are going to use on, is, on. And the first one we're using do, and in this case, we're going to use the verb to be. So, John is at the office. So am I. Well, next one, and it says, John isn't at the office, neither am I. So in this case, when we are um, writing or uh, saying sentences, we need to pay attention to the, the auxiliary in that case. We can say the auxiliary, but it's the second word that we're using in the sentence. So we can use the present simple with uh, the auxiliary do and that, and also we can have that present simple, but with the verb to be. So in that case, when we are using the auxiliary in the answer or in the expression that we are going to use. So in neither, we are going to follow that structure. So in that case, if, if I am using the verb to be, um, I'm going to answer with that verb to be also. Or if I am using the auxiliary uh, or the, the auxiliary do, I'm going to use it in the answer. Then we have present continuous using am is R. And we have the examples. Luke is going out. Tonight. And we are, so am I. And we have the other one that is the narrative. Luke isn't going out tonight. Neither am I. Then we have past simple using D. And we have Jill went to the cinema yesterday. In that case, we are using the structure 
in the sentence. So did I, in that case, so did I. Then we have the negative, did, didn't. Did, didn't go to the cinema. Yesterday. And we have the response. Neither did I. Now we are going to see that simple with be. And in that case, we are using what and where. And it says she was at the library. And the compliment, so was I. She wasn't at the library. Neither was I. Person perfect. In which we use have and have. They have been to Colombia. So have I. They haven't been to Colombia. Neither have I. We have future simple. Using we. And we have Edward will be at the, uh, the castle later. So we like. And negative Edward won't be at the cafe. later neither will i and we have the last one that is mobile bird and it says repeat the model bird And we have some examples. We have number one. He will like a cup of tea. And we are going to say, so will I. Second one, he wouldn't like a cup of tea. And we're going to say, neither will I. Another one, Emma can speak Russian. So can I. And the last one, that is the negative one. 
Emma can speak. Russian. Neither can I. So in this case, uh, if you can notice that when we are creating a sentence and then we are making like the response with the so, with the so or neither, we are repeating the structure. So we are going to see the first example here. We have this one. Looks it like coffee. That sentence when we read. This sentence, we know that they are in present simple. And how can we uh, respond? We are going to use the auxiliary do that in that case is in present simple. And then we have the negative with the verb. So in that case, we are completing the Structure using the same structure as the sentence. Así que cuando tengamos las oraciones, tenemos que igualar esa parte de la respuesta con eh, la estructura que tenemos. Si en esto tenemos el presente simple, do and does, mi respuesta va a ser con presente simple, do or does. O en that case, doesn't. Si en el siguiente tenemos el verbo to be en la oración, John is at the office, yo tengo que responder con lo mismo, con el verbo to be. So am I. John isn't at the office, neither am I. Estamos igualando la estructura. Then, present continuous, eh, am is are with the verb in ing form. So in that case, is going. That is the structure. Is going. And I am using the structure for the answer. So am I. En este caso, para la respuesta, no es que vamos a poner el going también. Let me see. Ah, el enlace yo lo mandé al grupo, pero si quiere lo vuelvo a enviar. Lo voy a volver a enviar para que tengan acceso otra vez. Ok. Don't worry for that. Ya lo voy a volver a enviar. No se preocupen por eso. Los apuntes están ahí. Ustedes solo entran al enlace y los encuentran actualizados. ¿Verdad? So, in that case. We are not going to use the ing form. We are going to use the verb to be. So, then, in this case, we have did, that is past simple. We are having this sentence, Jill went to the cinema. Sabemos que al utilizar esa estructura, estamos utilizando pasado simple. Así que vamos a responder en pasado simple utilizando el auxiliar the, that is, the auxiliary that we are going to use for that structure. So we have here, so did I. And then we have neither did I. In that case, we are not going to say neither did an I. In that case, you are going to use did. Then we have past simple with be, was, and where. Again, we are using an structure. We are using was and where in the sentence, and then we are going to use was and where for the response. Then present perfect with have and has. And again, we are going to repeat the structure. They have been to Colombia, so have I. They haven't been to Colombia, neither have I. Then we have future simple with will. Again, we are going to use. The structure. Edward will be at the cafe later. So, will I. Así que yo también estaré, ¿verdad? Edward won't be at the cafe later, neither will I. Yo tampoco estaré. And then we have the modal verbs. In this case, we have uh, different modal verbs. 
that we can use for this kind of sentences. And when we have a specific modal verb in the structure of the sentence, we are going to repeat the same modal verb. Ya tenemos los modales ahí en la oración, así que lo único que vamos a hacer es repetirlos. En el primero es who, so en mi respuesta yo pongo so who I. And in the second one is can. And in my response, I will say can, so can I. In that case, we are repeating the, uh, the structure of the modal verb. So now we have so and neither. We know that so do I. We can use it for positive sentences in which the sentence or the things that they are saying are true for me. And neither do I is for negative connotation in which the sentence is not true for me. And we have here the structure for the different sentences. Now we are going to say, or we are going to to see what about to and either. You know that we have four words. So, to, either, and neither. And we have seen two. That is, so and neither. Now we are going to see two and either. Tenemos cuatro palabras, ya vimos dos. Vamos con las siguientes dos. Vamos a ver to and either. So it's saying we can also use I do too and I don't either, which means the same as so do I and neither do I. So in that case, it's saying that we are using it um, like to make it something kind of what? Kind of different, but they have the same meaning. No son tan diferentes, ellos tienen eh, prácticamente el mismo significado, solo que lo hacemos para darle un poco de eh, énfasis, ¿verdad? A las palabras o cambiando un poco y que se vean eh, no tan saturadas de la misma frase, ¿verdad? So in that case, we are saying that I do too is when we are using phrases or sentences in which the things are true for me. And we are using um, I don't either for a negative sentence that are not true for me. So it's the same use of the other one that we were learning before. So we have examples again. And we have the first one, and it says, John, it's saying, again, we are going to use the same sentence as the first example. I hate mushrooms. And we are going to say, I do too. That is, I hate, I also hate mushrooms. Es lo mismo que estábamos viendo con la estructura anterior, lo que estamos haciendo con eso, solo que estamos cambiando las palabras. 
pero es lo mismo y lo vamos a utilizar de la misma forma. We have the other example that is the same of uh, Lucy, that in which she is saying, I don't live in London. And we are saying, I don't either. I don't either. It's saying that the verb changes in the same way as with so do I and neither do I. So in that case, we need a negative verb in neither. Or in either in, in this case. So remember that we need a negative verb in which we can um, know that we are using either in this case. And we have more examples. In this case, we have one, two, three, and four. We have the present simple. And it says, John is at the office. I am too. Yo también. Present continuous. Luke isn't going out tonight. I am not either. Number three, present perfect. They have been to Colombia. And we said, I have two. And the last one, mobile verb. And it's saying Emma can speak Russian. I can either. So in this uh, part, we are saying uh, that we are using it in the the vowel of these in the same way to and either are using as a um, so and neither tienen el mismo uso y ya sabemos que so and to se utilizan para oraciones positivas que son reales o son verdaderas para nosotros también que se aplican para nosotros, porque también eh, realizamos tal vez la misma actividad, eh, estamos de acuerdo con lo que se está haciendo o nos gusta lo mismo. En este caso vamos a utilizar so and to. 
con lo que es la estructura específica de la oración. Then, neither and either lo vamos a utilizar para oraciones negativas donde nosotros no estamos de acuerdo con las acciones, no las realizamos, no lo tenemos o no lo hicimos y seguimos de nuevo la estructura de la oración para poder responder. We have another one that is me too and me neither. And it said we can also use me too and me neither And it says, me too has the same meaning as so plus auxiliary verb plus I. I mean, as, so, plus, auxiliary verb, plus, I. And me neither. has the same meaning as neither plus auxiliary plus I. And it says that me neither are very informal. So in that in that case, when we are using me neither is when we are having an informal conversation. So in that case, we can say that me too is a formal way to say something or to answer something. And we are going to write again the same example. We have John saying the same sentence. I hate mushrooms. And we are answering me too. All your loss, almost, yo también. Then we have again a Lucy, and she is saying, I don't live in London. Then we have the answer that is saying, me neither. I also don't live in London, yo tampoco. In that case, in, in the explanation, we have that we are just using the subject I. En, esas, eh, en esos ejemplos solo hemos estado utilizando el sujeto yo, como obviamente per, primera persona y estamos respondiendo nosotros. O sea, yo como persona estoy respondiendo. But now we are going to use another subject other than I. We are going to use another subject for answering those sentences. Teacher. Tell me. John Tell me. says, John say, says 
I hate mushroom, mm -hmm. but I disagree with these sentences. Sentence. Uh -huh. So in, in that case, if, when... if I if I love mushroom, mm -hmm. how I respond? So in that case. You can use hate as a negative uh, connotation because in some cases it's saying that you need a negative word for answering a bad uh, sentence. But in that case, I hate mushrooms and you can say, I disagree as, I, as you say, it. I disagree because I love mushrooms. But in that case, you're not going to use neither or either because you don't have uh, the negative verb. You can say, I disagree because I like very much, or I love mushrooms, but we are not going to use neither or either. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. So, subject other than I, because in that case, we are not going to use me as an example. We are going to use another person. And of course, we can also use this expression to talk about what's true for other people, not just ourselves. En este caso, no vamos a hablar solamente de lo que es verdadero para nosotros, sino que también podemos incluir a otras personas en esta conversación. So, we have again the same example of John. And John is saying, I hate mushrooms. And we can say, in this case, we are going to change the subject. And it says, so does Laura, or Laura does too, or Laura too? Laura does too. or Laura too. So as you can see, we have like different uh, answer for the same sentence. We have like a variety of answers. Tenemos una variedad de respuestas en este caso. So does Laura, que es lo mismo como decir, ah, Laura también. Laura does too, or Laura too. So in that case, we are going to use the um, response or the answers that are the best for us and in which we feel like very uh, comparable to say. And in the other one that we have, uh, the example of Lucy, we say, I don't live in London. And we can answer like this. Neither does David. Another answer or response, David doesn't either. Or another one, David neither. So different response, and we can use all of them if we want, or we feel better with short answers, we can use they did neither. And we are going to have some more examples uh, because we are going to end this part. And we have here these examples. We live in London and so do they. Emma loves tennis. Jill and Laura do too.
My parents don't come here often. Neither does Alice. She isn't French and neither is he. And the last one it says, you don't like cold water. Cold weather, neither do we. So in those uh, sentences, we have um, different subjects and we are not like using just I for that uh, expression. Así que tenemos esa información, ¿verdad? De el so, to, neither, either, donde eh, tenemos, ¿verdad? Que dos se utilizan para oraciones que son positivas. En este caso, recuerden que una de las reglas que aparece ahí, una de las cosas que nos decía la información, es que si yo estoy de acuerdo, voy a utilizar el so y el to. Si la oración es real para mí. Si la oración no es real para mí, Básicamente tenemos que eh, tener en la oración una palabra negativa para poder responder de forma negativa. En el caso de que no tengamos una palabra negativa, no vamos a poder utilizar esas palabras. Podemos utilizar otra, otra respuesta, pero no el neither o el either, porque necesitamos siempre verdad tener una palabra negativa que nos ayude a identificar que la oración es negativa. Well, that is one of the rules that we can read in the information about so, to, neither, or either. So, in this case, I'm going to write like some more examples following an structure of neither and either, and then we're going to write some examples about so and to. So, we are going to do it like this, and we are going to have the um, the structure that we are going to follow with these sentences. So we have neither plus auxiliary plus subject. In this case, in the auxiliary, we can say that we also can use he or have and the subject. That is for the response. In this case, it's not the structure for the sentence. In this case, it's just for the response. And we are going to have like person A and person B, in which we have a conversation with other person. And we are going to have like an explanation of the of the response. So we are going to have three parts. And we are going to have three fourteen fifteen. It's kind of long, but we are going to see. So here, person A. Here, person B, and we have here this sentence. So, person A is saying, we're going to see the sentence. I am not hungry, that is negative. I am not hungry. That is, present simple. And we are going to answer, neither am I. Remember to use the structure. Neither am I. And we can say that I am not 
hungry either. So we can have both like both options of answers. Listen A, you aren't trying. Neither are you. And we have the other one. You aren't trying either. We have the other one. I don't need help. And we have here, neither do I. And the next one, it says, I don't need help either. Here we have, a Steve doesn't like fish. And we have, neither does Sam. And we have the other one that is saying, Sam doesn't like fish either. I was the more. Neither was I. I wasn't bored either. They weren't invited. Neither were we. We weren't invited either. So in that case, we have like, in the second one, we have the structure that we have at the beginning. There is neither plus the auxiliary uh, plus the subject. But in the second one, we have um, the whole sentence, but we are using either at the end. Así que tenemos esas dos opciones. La primera es con la estructura de el neither con el auxiliar y con el sujeto. Neither am I, neither are you, neither do I. Y la segunda es la oración, I am not hungry, Either, y solo le agregamos el either. No estaba hambriento tampoco, o no tenía hambre, o no sentía hambre. So, we have two ways to answer or to use those uh, words. So, we are going to end the session here, and I will add the whole information about the other sentences that we were going to see. And you will find that information maybe tomorrow. So we are going to see each other tomorrow in the next session. So have a really good night. And we are going to see in the next session. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Have a good night. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.